Hello chess friends and welcome to Azan of Chess Channel and welcome to our best chess games of all time series. So in this series we're following the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really a nice tactical beauty played by two legends of this uh, very nice sport that we are loving. It's the game between Tegnan Petrosyan against Boris Spassky in their world championship match in 1966. So in 1966 Boris Spassky was the challenger, Tigran Petrosyan was the world champion and Spassky lost uh, with a result of 12 and a half uh, to 11 and a half for, for Petrosyan. Then in 1969 uh, Boris Spassky had the opportunity to face uh, um, uh, Petrosyan again and finally he won the match game and became the next world champion in chess. This game that I wanted to show you today, it really deserves to be on our chess list of this best games, uh, best chess games of all time because uh, here you see how strong really Petrosian was. He was really a great defender. He get got really some great defensive ideas uh, with some rook sacrifices just in order to activate some other pieces. And this tactical beauty that I wanted to show you today will be with the double rook sacrifice in in an early stage of the game we have to say that uh, because uh, sacrificing a rook in a later stage of the game is of course uh, sometimes a good tactical idea but then you have a clear way how to proceed in this particular game Tegan Petrosian will sacrifice the rook in an early stage of the game and then after that we'll have another great rook sacrifice which opens the position for these minor pieces and uh, Tigran Petrosian won this game very very effectively let's see the game uh, here we have knight to f3 uh, by Petrosian knight to f6 uh, Spassky we have g3 g6 uh, c4 bishop to g7 uh, bishop to g2 castling castling so far nothing special uh, knight to c6 and now knight to uh, knight to c3 d6 and after d4 we have the so-called card belt variation of the king's indian and uh, basically it started the game started with an english opening but we have now uh, the card spot variation and the card spot variation of white is sort of a preparation in which you have this ver very nice diagonal for the light square bishop black is also we have this pawn central control we have also the knights on natural squares black has also prepared uh, some uh, his knights uh, on this very very active squares and the main idea of um, of white is after a potential d5 uh, here to get some space control on the fifth rank but there is also one problem for white when we do that when we do this d5 move uh, although you gain some space but then you open uh, the light uh, the dark square diagonal for the star square bishop but you close your uh, light square diagonal so these are the problems and the advantages of from white's perspective in this particular opening uh, in the game uh, a6 was played by um, by spassky uh, there is a line i like to play against this setup uh, of white i like to play bishop to f5 and uh, after potential d5 knight to a5 attacking here the c4 and the mo best line i think for white here is to proceed with the move knight to d4 uh, knight takes c4 doesn't bring you so much because uh, then you have knight takes f5 and after g takes f5 this pawn on uh, f5 will be really hard uh, hard to defend so then white continues the game with the bishop here which would be i think an, uh, uh, an advantage for white so here spassky plays a very aggressive line with the move a6 with uh, the preparation maybe even to sacrifice the pawn but still you have the you have some worries on this light square diagonal and in the game petrosian played this move uh, d5 uh, attacking the knight getting as i said some space control with an advanced pawn on the other side of the board so we gain some space uh, against our opponent but uh, you close your light square uh, diagonal that's the main problem as i said and open your opponent's diagonal here for the dark square bishop in the game knight to a5 was played and uh, the problem is if you immediately play the move b3 then there are some tactical threats with knight to e4 then really challenging here the knight wouldn't be protected uh, with the pawn uh, b with the b2 pawn then you have some really uh, dark square problems so that's why here knight to d2 uh, was played by by petrosian protecting uh, the pawn without 
playing the move b3 but there is also one problem you, you again uh, are a little bit covering your own uh, dark square bishop the dark square bishop is a little bit blocked out by its own knight in the game c5 was played uh, closing the position on uh, dark squares here on the queen side because there was this threat to play the move finally b4 and locking the knight uh, then you have to recapture here the pawn and you lose some material there are really um, some tactical lines even if uh, white plays here the move b4 and after something like knight to d5 i'm not going to explain it it gets gets really complicated but if you want to know more about this particular line check out my king's indian series uh, in which i have explained this uh, king's indian opening uh, really i tried really to cover all of the sidelines and in which uh, i have covered from black's perspective also this cards but variation that was played here in the game so you can check it out uh, here after the move uh, knight to d2 we have as i said c5 closing the position of light squares uh, dark square pardon me and now queen to c2 which is the preparation to finally play the move b3 fixing the position on the queen side and then this knight to d5 idea doesn't work because you cover your knight and you have the opportunity to finally uh, protect everything here and keep a compact position on the queen side uh, we have uh, e5 uh, it seems that uh, d takes e6 is a good idea but it's really bad because the bishop comes very actively into the game and because you're have played with your knight on d2 you cannot attack the bishop here maybe on g5 uh, you have some c4 problems if you for instance try rook to d1 in order to get the rook on the same file like the queen which would be a natural move i think queen to c7 solves all the positional problems uh, of blacks here and after knight to e4 another problem we can simply take knight takes c4 here uh, b3 can be maybe played but now we can simply play knight takes e4 here uh, bishop takes e4 that's not a problem but now queen to a5 again i think solves all of the problems we are attacking this knight to c3 and i think this is a favorable continuation here for black so uh, after the move e5 uh black has accomplished uh this common king's indian setup which is a good thing i think here to have this uh, block pawn structure in the center and the idea is now to finally get our f5 pawn breakthrough which is a common idea in the king's indian then maybe f4 e4 trying to crack the position on the king's side getting sort of a pawn storm which is as i said the main main idea of the king's indian uh, in the game finally this move b3 which fixes the position and now we have knight to g4 preparing this move f5 uh, here uh, petrosian closes the center also with the move e4 and now finally f5 e takes f5 uh, it seems now that bishop to f5 is dangerous but it's not a problem because we can simply close uh close the center again with a nice move with the knight knight to e4 and uh, this is now an advanced pawn which is supported by the d6 pawn basically the main idea about advanced pawn and supported pawns are to create a blockade against this pawn so knight to e4 perfectly fine uh, the knight gets on a very centralized square but we have still a good activity with our pieces and now finally to play the move b2 b5 seems like a dangerous move but we can simply take uh, c takes b5 uh, a takes b5 knight takes b5 and for instance if you try to challenge the knight then knight to c3 simply uh, getting the knight back we are continuing the game with one pawn up a pawn is a pawn as i always like to say nothing special so i th not seeing a clear way how to how black should uh, make some progress here now we have sort of a pawn minority on the king side but from positional point of view i think white has solved all of the problems so i th think it's not a problem to proceed here so uh, after the move uh, e takes f5 uh, g takes f5 and it's also a common idea of the king's indian then we get this uh two mobile pawns trying to crack the position here on the king side uh, and in the game uh, knight to d1 was played which was maybe a slight inaccuracy uh, play, played by petrosian uh, here spassky tried to move b5 but maybe uh, e4 immediately is a good way uh, for uh, for petrosian uh, pardon me for spassky uh, if for instance bishop to b2 is played then we can simply take uh, bishop takes b2 and you would be forced to take out with the queen that's the main problem because if you take out with the knight then we have this move e3 and uh, you see the problems uh, you cannot take because you get the fork of the knight knight takes e3 you lose the rook so you would be forced to play the move f3 and 
knight to h6 is a great move you getting another tempo because the knight is attacked and here after knight to b1 there is really a nice positional move to play the move f4 uh, see uh, if you for instance take g takes f4 then knight to f5 this is a very dangerous knight which protects this space advantage on the third rank and now we could try maybe something like king to h8 rook to g uh, g8 trying to get our attack uh, on the g file uh, here queen to f6 is also a possibility so that's why here uh, uh, queen to b2 would be sort of a must move in order to prevent this e3 move but now b5 is a good uh, decision here for black finally to crack the position on the queen side uh, with the spawn storm possibilities again trying to take out maybe open the b file and uh, this would be i think an equal game still uh, white has maybe the opportunity to play uh, sort of a blocking system with the move knight to e3 that's why in the game uh, as i said e4 wasn't played uh, here after the move knight to d1 so as i said uh, uh, Spassky had the opportunity maybe to play the move e4 immediately he chose to play here the move b5 which is also an aggressive move but it leads now uh, into a simplified line with move f3 uh, knight to e3 of course is not possible that's why uh, here we have a counter attack by uh, by Spassky with the move e4 uh, bishop to b2 covering everything and now uh, we have uh, e takes f3 and there is a problem uh, if you for instance want to take uh, the pawn here of course uh, petrosian played the correct move he played bishop to f3 but spassky was really tricky if you take with the knight knight takes f3 then we have this move bishop to b2 uh, again you cannot take out with the knight knight takes b2 is not a possibility because you get this move knight to e3 again the fork so you would take uh, you would have to take out with the queen queen takes b2 but now you see it's a b takes c4 and of course if you try b takes c4 then we can take out with the knight and grab a pawn so uh, that's why uh, in the game bishop to f3 was played not to play the move um, knight takes f3 and now bishop takes b2 we have queen takes b2 and now knight to e5 cementing the knight on a very active square and now bishop to e2 B uh, placing the bishop in this uh, opposite uh, opposite side uh, opposite attack here not uh not allowing this knight to jump on this very active squares d3 or f3 again and also not on uh, g4 if knight the knight jumps on g4 then we can simply take out the knight and then continue the game with two very powerful knights so uh, in the game now f4 was played and this is now the critical position of the game this is now where the fun start sort of we have now a really dynamic game uh in the game g takes f4 was played maybe a better idea is to take out with the rook here rook takes f4 here uh rook takes f4 now after g takes f4 maybe knight to g6 is the possibility but uh it's playable uh, you can simply try to uh, try to defend with knight to f2 simply re uh, regrouping a little bit with your pieces but in the game um here uh g takes f4 was played not to take out uh, not to take out with the uh, with the rook uh, here petrosian took out with the pawn uh in in the game we have bishop to h3 and this is now spassky's main mistake he should have proceeded here with the move rook takes f4 uh, pardon me here uh he sh he should have taken simply here this rook uh with the rook to pawn on f4 if rook takes then we have queen to uh, queen to g5 attacking uh, the king and also the rook so now after potential uh, rook takes uh, rook to g4 we have knight takes g4 and you have to take out with the bishop here you can also um, then recapture with our bishop on c8 so in the game bishop to h3 was played which seems like a dangerous move uh, of course it was tricky because f takes uh, e5 is not a possibility then you get queen to g5 and you get checkmated that's the problem but here uh, uh, petersian found a really nice move he played the move knight to e3 uh, simply giving up on his rook but get his uh, knight as a good defender here around the around the king and uh, spassky simply took bishop takes f1 we have rook takes f1 
and if we ever evaluate the position now we have a pawn and a piece for a rook but there is one problem this knight is too far away from from the action the king is a little bit endangered we don't have any more the pawns in front of the king this knight is attacked so you have to retreat you have to go back somewhere with your knight the queen is also so far not participating in the defense or in the attack and the problem is is this dark square diagonal for the queen you see the problems the queen is aiming here against black's king in the game uh, knight to g6 was played but now bishop to uh, bishop to g4 very important move activating the bishop and now this is a unprotectable square for for the bishop in the game knight takes f4 was played and here petrosian simply sacrifices another rook rook takes f4 rook takes f4 bishop to e6 and this is really game over basically for 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 black although we have uh, two rooks for two minor pieces but uh, let's see possible continuation if you try for instance king to f8 to escape then queen to, queen to h8 is uh, possible you have queen king to e7 we can simply try another check king to f8 again queen to h8 here king to uh, e7 would be a forced move but now queen to g7 here if you try king to uh, e8 then we have queen to g6 and uh, you have to uh, again play with your king on e7 but now queen to g5 attacking the rook and if you try to cover then knight to e4 loses i think immediately because we can try also knight to f5 for instance if you try to cover then knight to f5 uh, deflecting the king from the defense and simply take out the whole rook so that's why in the game after the move bishop to e6 uh, here rook to f7 was played trying to cover somehow but now this knight comes very actively into the game uh, queen to h4 h4 you see this knight to e4 was very important because it doesn't allow you some checks on the g5 and now knight takes d6 attacking again the, the piece here uh, king uh, queen to g5 was played king to h1 uh queen to e3 doesn't work because you get simply bishop to f7 uh, you have to uh, play with your king only you have only one square you see how dangerous the queen is here on dark squares king to f8 is a, uh, is a must move but now queen to uh, queen to h8 and here after king to e7 we have simply the fork uh, on the king uh, and the queen and it would be game over so that's why in the game uh, after the move uh, king to h1 you see uh, Buspaski didn't take out the knight. He played uh, rook to eight, set, rook, to, rook to a7, trying to cover everything. But now, this game is really over because we have bishop to f7, rook takes f7, and you can pause the video and try to find the best next move. Uh, it's a really nice tactical shot that, uh, of course, Peterson uh, Peterson calculated uh, earlier. It's a move in which uh, Buspaski immediately resigned. It's the move queen to h8 sacrificing the queen you have to take out as i said in this position um petrosian uh, spassky resigned because you have here the fork knight takes f7 you take out the queen and we are continuing the game with the whole piece and the whole pawn up and this would be of course a completely winning end game for white okay i think this was really a great great tactical battle in the king's indian in the Carlsbad variation uh, as i said petrosian won this uh, world championship match against spassky but spassky came uh, stronger back in 1969 then finally crushed uh, petrosian in their match game and then faced bobby fisher in their legendary game at the end of the video i wanted to show you uh, the best comment that uh, i i got from you from my subscribers it was a comment by dg he wrote really a nice text but i wanted to show you really uh, sort of a uh, the, the most important part of his uh, comment regardless of how much theory you know how strong you or determined you are how weak your opponent and how informed you are at any given time you can never be prepared for anything uh, for, for everything pardon me. Uh, so this was really i think a great comment because uh, you cannot really be prepared um uh, prepared for everything in chess and uh, it's uh, one of my things that i try to explain to my students that i'm coaching sometimes um you cannot be really prepared for everything so you shouldn't base your whole game uh, just to 
study openings you should also try to study uh, middle games try to study tactics there are so many factors in chess that if you depend if you um, rely simply on your openings that could be really deadly in chess so try many many of the segments of, of the game try everything try to be also physically prepared also, also mentally prepared these are really huge factors in, in chess uh, it's not at all about opening preparations and uh, maybe some tactical shots chess is uh, more and more and that's why we love it because it's so complex it's so uh, it's so uh, beautiful it's it's so um, it's a game in which you have to basically battle also against yourself uh, how prepared you are that's how uh, good you'll be and uh, that's why i liked really this comment by my subscriber as i said uh, write me some messages uh, write me some suggestions if you like to cover maybe some games i'll try it i cannot cover everything but uh, in this series i think we had really some cool games it will continue our series with some more rook sacrifices queen sacrifices and all of these beautiful elements of the chess game okay i hope you enjoyed this uh, video meanwhile you can watch my other uh, best chess games of all time with some more spassky fisher games and many many more and you can also watch my best chess games played by computers with some alpha zero lila zero stockfish and many many more and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course